I'm Matt with MROC, and today we're going to do an interior installation of our P series leadstone. This particular color is called Roan. And we're doing an interior project. This uh, substrate is a concrete wall, and we've already got our starter strip down, and a little bit of our stone is uh, already installed. So a lot of people have questions about this product when they first get started. First they want to know is the, is the rail embedded or do they have to put the rail in later? And the, and the answer of course is comes this way. It's installed with 22 different anchor points inside of this stone. This PVC rail is an injected molded rail and so it's very durable, will uh, perform in all environments, interior or exterior. This product is also, it's heavy. You know, this wasn't built to be just a uh, super lightweight product or a product that just flies up on the wall. It was built to be very durable. It was built to be thick with plenty of dimension in the stone. So with MROC P-Series, you get all sorts of different um, advantages to other stones, such as the concrete lock. This product actually locks two different ways on the wall. It locks with the concrete lock, and it also locks with the built-in uh, PVC rail that, that comes with P-Series. So today we'll show you a few things. We'll show you the installation over a concrete interior wall. We're gonna show you how to install the stone on a, a 45 degree angle actually rolls through, which makes the stone installation a little bit trickier to do, but we'll show you those things today as we, we do this interior install. So, we've already installed our P-Series starter strip. This is something that's important and it, and it uh, installs at the level the stone is going on. So, for example, this stone is going floor level. The, the P-Series starter strip installs directly on the floor. And we'll show you a little bit later um, exactly how that P-Series starter strip works. But for right now, it's really simple. The bottom part of the rail on the back side of a P-Series flat stone locks into the P-Series starter strip. So it's pretty simple. You just slide the rail into the starter strip and then you slide it into place and that's it next step we're going to put screws into the rail and we're going to be sure and install the, the screws in the designated area and if you need to know where the concrete anchors go there's a, a line right here on the rail and there's a little arrow that says anchors below this line so there's also some little holes here, but sometimes people get a little confused and want to put it in this little slot here. That's not where the anchors go. You'll figure that out real quick after you install and the next rail won't slide down in behind that rail. So it's not that big of a deal, but for now, make sure you put your concrete anchors into this hole below this line on the, on the rail itself. So all we need to do is take a masonry bit and we're gonna drill right through the hole and into the concrete wall, and we're gonna install a concrete anchor. If you were going over uh, drywall and you needed to hit a stud, then you could pick a, a hole that, that actually hit the stud uh, in the substrate itself behind a interior wall that, that wasn't concrete. So don't be too caught up in which hole you choose or, or where you put the anchor. It doesn't really matter. All right, so we'll put eye protection on and install this first concrete anchor. Pretty simple, we'll just change out into a 5 30 seconds masonry bit. These concrete anchors will tell you what size drill bit you need. Most of them come with a drill bit.
the rail is designed when it that anchor pulls the rail to the wall the top part of this rail actually pulls back out a little bit and then that allows for the next row of flat stones to lock right behind that rail and to set flush on the top of this a mistake that a lot of people make when they install this is that they don't get the stone set setting all the way down on this part of the stone. Uh, they leave a little gap and that can throw each row off above that. So when you're installing this product, don't worry about the rails, don't worry about that uh, where those rails are, pay attention to this part of the stone. Keep that level and make sure the next row sets flush on that part of the stone. And that's it for this stone. We've got two concrete anchors. That's what we recommend that you put in with each stone. As you can see, we've already installed some, some stone on this wall. So what we want to do is we want to backtrack just a little bit to the left. We want to work our way out almost like a uh, staircase. Usually it's best to start uh, in, a, in a corner. It, it often works better to install from left to right, but this stone can be installed from right to left almost as easily. And so as you look at this, what we'll do is we'll just continue stair stepping this until we reach the level that we're, that we're trying to get to today. All right, while we're down here, let's talk about the starter strip. The, the installation of the starter strip is really simple. As you can see, um, it's got a couple of grooves here and then it's got a, a notch where you put your concrete anchors the same uh, that you use in the, in the flat stones that you're installing to the wall. Uh, this needs to be done first and really simple. And if, when you think about starter strip, it just simply sets at the level that you want the stone to start on. So for an example, this uh, stone is starting on the, the ground level of this project. And so that means that the starter strip would simply start on the, on the very bottom and then it would be uh, attached with the same concrete anchors that we used in the stone. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the cornerstones. MROC P-Series cornerstones are two pieces. They're going to come out of the box ready to be matched up, but it's very important that when you take them out of the box, you match them up and, and I would advise that you keep them together. In other words, don't take 10 boxes of corners and then just unstack them and set them everywhere. Match them up and then set them together. So for this project, we've already cut this 45 degree angle. That's a little bit of a tricky um, angle for the stone and it's a little bit of a tricky cut. But keep in mind, we're using a small compound miter saw that uh, we can set at 45 degree angle. And if you look, all we've done with the cornerstones is we've cut short side of the, the stone two different angles to get our 45 degree. Now, a grinder is sometimes needed to maybe grind a little spot to make it fit a little bit better, but just put them up on the wall, work with them, and it's always simple enough to go back and take a grinder and cut a little place out so that it'll fit nice and snug. And the cornerstones install practically the same way as the flat stones. They the rails are built in, they lock into the rails below them, just the way that the flat stones did. When we install this, we're going to make sure the rail gets locked behind the rail below. We're going to make sure that this gets seated to the stone row below, and then we're going to put it in place. We're going to slide that in like that. And then we're going to take the other corner stone, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to slide them into place. Make sure they're locked down, and that's it. Next, we'll use the same concrete anchors and install it the same way as we did the flats below. So we've installed our cornerstones, and we're moving on to an, another flat stone that'll attach right against this stone here. No change. Everything installs the same as the stones below. It makes no difference whether you're installing against a cornerstone or flat stone. Concrete lock, concrete lock. We're going to use the rail, slide it in behind the rail that's on the wall. We'll fill that slide into place. We're going to slide it all the way over here against that stone. And we're going to make sure we're seated good against the bottom of this. 
And that's it. All right, so how do you cut MROC stone? That's a question that we get often. Really, about any circular saw will work. This is a compound miter saw. It has a seven inch diamond tip masonry blade. That doesn't come with it, but they're in all home building supply stores. We've already measured this stone and we're gonna place it on the saw and make the cut. Diamond tip masonry blade cut through the stone just fine. Made a little dust, that's why we're cutting exterior. But it also cuts right through the uh, rail as well. Same, same blade. One thing I want you to keep in mind is on occasion, you have uh, a buildup or a little burr of concrete or maybe a little overpour on the back side of these stones. And that's where the grinder comes in. So it's real quick. Now this grinder is a four inch grinder and it's got a masonry blade in it. But we've got a little burr right here and we're gonna fix that. We've been at this project a couple of days, and as you can see, all of the P-Series stone is on the wall, and it looks great. And we're on to trimming this product out. That's a question that we get all the time. How do we trim P-Series out? Of course, MROC has a couple of options. Our chiseled top trims and our chiseled top seal are great options for this product. But for this project, being an interior application, we've decided to go with one of our newest products called M-Trim. So we'll show you a little bit how that works. This is how M-Trim goes up. You have a starting board. This product is two and a half by one and a half. And it just gets anchored to the wall. As you can see, we've got anchors uh, drilled through the board here, and it's a good solid base uh, attached to the substrate here. Now M-Trim will come with three components, starting board, front trim, and top trim. And these components are, are going to go up real simple. Anchor the, the starting board. This trim will go into that starting board first, like that. And then your top trim will just sit right on top of that, like that. All right, so our project is complete. We've got our P-Series up, got our M trim up, and this project turned out beautiful. So now, if you're ready to buy some MROC products, go to MROCstone.com or any major building supply company. All right, we appreciate you tagging along for this project. We hope to see you on our next project. And we'll see you soon.